So this is the dashboard. Now, as we can see, uh, to the top left is this net migration map. Uh, now, the darker the color uh, of the country, uh, the larger the net migration uh, in flux is for that country. So the US and Canada, uh, several European countries here have a higher uh, influx of uh, migration coming in. The upper right plot is a scatter plot, which would start to populate as the years go by. Now, due to some historical factors, i.e. some countries didn't even exist uh, in 1980, but also the difficulty to collect such data, uh, the uh, World Development Indicator data set uh, does not include uh, a lot of data for 1980, but as we move uh, towards 2010, we will have more and more. So this scatter plot shows the unemployment percent of people that are highly educated, highly skilled, versus the net migration per country. Um, to the lower left, we're seeing um, the 20 OECD countries, those with the highest um, human capital flight uh, incoming flux. So uh, as we can see here, the US is the, the most popular country for, for uh, the brain drain gain phenomenon. Um, and now uh, notice that the Y axis uh, on this uh, bar, bar plot is a logarithmic. So that means that the differences are even larger and the U.S. is, is uh, predominant in this. Um, what we have to the right of the bar plot are two circular bar plots. And the first one uh, depicts the brain gain, the brain drain distribution uh, for uh, each selected country. So for example, if we select um, uh, so it's France, and then we can see uh, how the, the, the distribution uh, for this brain gain is for the 1980. That means that Morocco, Tunisia, Italy, and Algeria are the countries that are sending uh, people to France. Um, and on the right, we have the brain drain population percentage. That means how much of the country of origin are, the, are, are people coming in. So we see that there's a larger percentage of Tunisia that is coming into France than there is from Morocco or Algeria. So if we go to the to Great Britain, here we can see that uh, most the most people that are coming from the people that are coming in most are Irish and uh, Indian. However, there is a largest part of Cyprus and a larger part of Ireland um, that is coming in. So as we move along in the year, we will start noticing interesting patterns. For example. Uh, in the 1980s, before the, the fall of the Soviet Union, there was no um, incoming uh, migration. There were, were very few um, migrants towards the Soviet Union. Um, whereas as we move after the fall of the Soviet Union and after 2000 even, we notice that this starts to change and the scatter plot is being populated. By hovering here, we can see which country. Um, so now in the 2000s, we're seeing some, some different things. But Let's move all the way to 2010 to start notice some, some very interesting uh, things happening. So first of all, in this net migration map, we're notice, noticing one specific pattern. If we were to draw a line along uh, the uh, equator or a bit higher, a bit northern than that, we can see that there is this, um, this concept, this notion of global north and global south, i.e., the global, the countries that are uh, north of this um, uh, of this line, uh, have a very higher uh, net migration uh, influx. So that means that there are more people coming in than they're leaving. That is not the case for the countries below that, and that reinforces this argumentation that people are are driven to the global north. Now, by looking at the scatter plot which reflects how these countries uh, are represented in terms of unemployment with advanced education versus their net migration, we can see a few interesting things. First of all, we see a very large accumulation around zero. A zero of net migration means that as many people are coming in, that's how many people are going out as well. However, we see also some extremes. First of all here, and another one to the left. Now, an extreme of this um, 
uh, the extreme to the right are around a value of a net migration of more than a million. This is the United States. And what this means is that the United States has managed to have a very low unemployment percentage for people that are highly educated and manages to receive very many people um, as, a, as net migration. So that means that people are drawn to the United States, which is an exception for, for, for most of the countries um, since it has that large of a number of an in, in, influx of migration. However, if we look at the other side, we can see India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, and even the Philippines or even smaller countries such as Peru, where we notice that the unemployment percentage for highly skilled, for highly educated, let's say PhD students, for, for, for doctors, for example, um, this unemployment percentage is still very low. So this is uh, about 10% or lower. So uh, even though there isn't an employment issue, they could people could easily uh, have gainful employment and have jobs and, and be at their countries of origin. They still migrate to a very large degree. So these are the, the minus 400,000 means that there's this net migration of uh, very large um, um, groups of people. And considering that there is low unemployment for these skilled people, then it's very interesting that they still choose to leave. That means that unemployment or pure financial uh, motivations are not the only, are not exclu the exclusive criteria. And this is, this is very important. So if financial and um, uh, employment criteria are not the most important, then we have to evaluate uh, towards what is. And what we're doing is we're taking uh, all these 20 uh, OECD countries, the countries that are receiving the most people and we're uh, the most highly skilled people and we're evaluating how uh, these people are, 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 are migrating to this. So from which country they're coming from and what percentage of the population of that country uh, they represent. So as we can see in 2010, um, we have the US at around 6 million people of um, uh, of a brain gain of an influx of highly skilled people. And then as we move uh, further, it's Canada, Great Britain, and Australia. And I notice that all these four countries are um, are English speaking countries that so accommodates that is that is an easy place to go and and um, and work. Um, what we also have to the right, as we mentioned, is this uh, distribution plots in terms of absolute numbers and also the population percentage. So having established that unemployment and financial criteria are not the only, are not the exclusive uh, reasons why people leave their countries, then we go ahead and evaluate, for example, France. And now in France, something very interesting appears. Morocco, Algeria, and Tunisia are three of the top four countries, um, where countries of origin for, for people that are coming in, for highly skilled workers. And that's very interesting because historically, um, uh, uh, France um, used to govern uh, these countries. And there is a, a very large migratory pattern that happens there. Also, uh, French is very widely spoken in these countries. Furthermore, if we notice the rest, we can see that it's the United Kingdom, Italy, Belgium, Germany. So these are countries that are, that are approximate, that are very geographically close. So we can see that there is a historical aspect to it. There is a sociological aspect to it with the language, but there is also a geographical perspective. If we go and evaluate, for example, Great Britain. Uh, with Great Britain, we can see that the country of origin for more for most highly skilled workers is India, and that makes sense due to um, uh, the British being uh, in India for such a long time. Then it's Ireland, which is the proximity, United States uh, with the language, and then Pakistan, same uh, reasons with India, and then the proximity, uh, Germany, South Africa again is a um, uh, it could be a, a language thing. So. These are countries that don't necessarily have a lower GDP or have 
uh, lower unemployment uh, inf uh, statistics, um, inf uh, unemployment numbers. It's just that sociological and historical um, characteristics also play a very uh, uh, important role. Now, if we look at the uh, population percentage, we see Malta, Ireland, and Cyprus, all which were involved historically um, with uh, the, the, the UK, with uh, Great Britain. So overall, what this visualization dashboard does is it shows our, the net migration, how that net migration is um, correlated or uh, connected with the unemployment and, and, and this, this labor and financial metric, uh, the unemployment of uh, uh, highly educated people. And then it allows us to evaluate it on a per country basis to see uh, how historical, sociological, and even political um, uh, information can actually drive this brain drain and gain phenomenon. Thank you very much.